today we'll be editing this Harman Phoenix 200 film scan. Let's get into it. Just a couple side notes on this. I shot this roll at 125 rather than 200. It does say on the box that this is 200 speed film. But if you do a little bit of research, you can find that this Phoenix's actual speed is 125. So I shot these images at 125. There's no pushing or pulling on these, just straight 125 and developed normally. I didn't use any filters over the lens for this. I had the lab develop this roll. Just from past experience, I've found that the photos tend to have less grain and have better color than when I develop a home using a C41 powder kit. So with that being said, let's get into this and see if we can uh, make a Phoenix 200 scan look decent. Here we go. To start off here, we will hit the W key to bring up the white balance tool. And we'll click on the film border to white balance this. And then I'll hit the R key to bring up the crop tool. And I'm gonna drag these edges of the photo inside the film border. Hit the return key. And then I'll hit Control Alt N to bring up Negative Lab Pro. And we're on basic color model. I prefer this one because it gives you a flatter or more neutral starting point. We'll hit convert and hey, not too bad. Other Phoenix scans I've seen, they tend to have a very orange hue or kind of a gold hue when the lab scans negatives. These I did at home and so far we're looking pretty good. We also know that Phoenix has a fair amount of fellation and you can see that here. We've got this basically blown out sky and hard edges here. So you can see some pretty good halation here on these posts and on the top of the car. Not a big deal, I'm not worried about it. It's Phoenix Gold, that's how it's supposed to look. So for now, I'm going to click apply and close negative lab. I'm gonna go back to the main screen here and hit the R key to pull up the crop tool again and drag these edges of the photo back out. Hit the return key. And then I'm going to scroll down here and come to the transform tab and click on the guided upright tool. Click on that. And what I'm gonna do is take this little cross and line it up with the flat spot of the sprocket. Click and drag it across the negative to the far side and let go once it's lined up. Same thing on the bottom. Line up this across with the sprocket holes. Click and drag to the other side. Perfect. Same thing on the sides here. Line it up, line up the cross, click and drag to the bottom and same thing on the right side. Start at the top, line up the cross, click and drag to the bottom. Boom, perfect. I'm gonna hit the R key again and bring down the edges of the photo to cut out the sprockets. Okay, and that should be pretty good. Everything looks even. Okay, looks good. Uh, okay, so we'll jump back into Negative Lab. Do you remember the shortcut for Negative Lab? If you remember, let me know in the comments. Okay, so we're back here in Negative Lab for this shot we're going to jump into the advanced tab before we do any other edits this is something we haven't really covered before other than just talking about so we'll go through this in a little more detail i don't quite understand what curve points does but it gives you some flexibility as far as the color balance of the scan so i'm going to click on auto and i'm going to come down to manual and this brings up another little box here that has how many curve points are in this image Generally scans start at seven curve points. If you are in the manual section, you can add more or less. With Phoenix, there's not really any change until you get to three and then two. So what's the difference between the two? If you work with three curve points, you still have adjustments on the edit tab with white balance. If you go to two points, you pretty much lose the ability to adjust the white balance here. You can still adjust it with these sliders here, but these white balance presets no longer work. And generally the HSL drop down menu doesn't really make a lot of difference. So to have more flexibility, I'm going to go with three. You can kind of see that we lose a little bit of contrast, which is actually helpful, but we also have kind of a green tint. So we'll just keep that in mind. Another thing with using three curve points is we're still able to use the process order. Generally adjustments here aren't super big, but I'm gonna put it on tones first. We can also still use the color density with three points. If we turn this to two, we aren't, are not able to do that. So I don't think there's gonna be a lot of difference here on this one. 
actually there is. So I'm going to put it on subtract density that kind of helped brighten the image up a little bit. This guy's super blown out here. And with Phoenix, it tends to blow out pretty easy. This was a very bright day. This was midday in California in the desert. So I'm not too worried about the sky in this one since the subject is the car. So let's jump down to color method. This kind of adjusts the white balance a little bit and contrast. I think in this one, linear dynamic seems to reduce a little bit of the darks. That looks about the same. So basically we have linear dynamic that's making a change or mid-tone weighted. And the black looks more green in linear dynamic. So I'm actually going to leave it on mid-tone because that darkens it and makes it look more black, not a greenish black. Toning method, I've never really noticed a difference on these, any of these, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, and clip method, I've never really messed with that either, so I'm just going to leave that on protect color balance. And that's all we'll do here in the advanced tab. So if we come back here to edit, I think I can click on AB and we can see before and after. It shouldn't be a huge difference, but there is a, there is some change. So here's before, here's after. Hasn't really done a lot other than just open up some of these black areas and given us a flatter image, which I prefer. It just makes it easier to work with and I can add contrast back in to my own preference or to your preference if you're editing your own stuff. I'm gonna come down here to lab standard. I don't think I'll mess with this really. If you actually, if you, if you want a flatter image, lab soft works pretty well. Let's just see what we've got here on some of these. Yeah, I'll probably just end up leaving it on Lab standard, it looks fine that way. I know I didn't go through every uh, adjustment, but I just kind of went through the ones that might make the most difference on this photo. I'm gonna come down to the white balance and we'll just try these real quick just to see if there's any change that improves this at all. Most likely it's gonna be pretty m minimal, but we'll just try it just to see. So there's a big difference from auto neutral to auto mix. If you really want this to look like or have the film look <laughs> if you put it on auto warm that's pretty much how it looks when your lab scans it <laughs> very orange and that's not a bad thing if you like the look go for it i tend to like my stuff to look as realistic as possible so we're going to stick with not auto mix auto neutral and then we can come down here to the hsl drop down menu just going to check these real quick just to see what they do There's not a ton of difference. So I'm just going to leave it on lab. I am going to add some sharpening. And I don't think I need to mess with the black clip. I just, if you need to open up more of the shadow area, you can reduce that. I think we're pretty good where we're at. Maybe I'll reduce it just a touch white clip if you want to try to recover some of your highlights but there just isn't really anything to recover so i'm just going to leave that alone now that we've made some adjustments here in negative lab i'm going to close this uh oh why did this pop up there we go get rid of that taskbar we'll hit apply oh, let's actually look at a before and after before we close out of this so here's before Here's after we've made our adjustments in negative lab, we've basically just reduced a bunch of contrast. And that looks pretty good. That That's helped improve the quality of this quite a bit, just reducing some contrast, which Phoenix tends to do that. It kind of acts like a slide film. It doesn't have the greatest latitude, so you get pretty you know, blown out highlights and lots of contrast. So that kind of helped to minimize here. Once you've lost information in the highlight areas, you can't really retain that. I mean, we can pull some of it back, but Again, I'm not really worried about that. So let's uh, close this and hit apply. And then we're going to send this to Photoshop. All right, so now we're in Photoshop. Let's, uh, ooh, you know what, I missed up. I didn't quite cut out all the sprocket holes, so we'll go back in and fix that. To start off here, we will grab the quick selection tool. I'm going to select everything inside the film border so I don't make adjustments to the actual film border itself. That doesn't need to have any changes made. Okay, so we pretty much have this completely selected. There's one little spot right here. 
Okay, so you can see how this spot jumped back from the film border to the edge of the photo on this side and this side. If we come in and hold the Alt key and then click and drag, it should snap back to the edge. One issue we're gonna have here is that there's a lot of dark area here that's similar to the film border, so it may take a second to uh, coax Photoshop into lining up with the film border. Looks like we got a pretty good uh, lineup there. So that's all good. All right, and that is all good. Let's try to get that a little closer. Close enough. We'll jump back over to the left side here. Same thing, hold the Alt key, click and drag. And the selection should snap to the edge of the film border, just like that, perfect. So what this does, it will allow us to make adjustments to everything that's selected, which is the actual photo itself and not the film border. Now we'll go up to the top here and click on filter and camera raw filter. This is gonna pull up what is basically Lightroom in Photoshop. So I'm gonna come down here to the curve panel and I'm going to just start making adjustments here. I'm gonna bump up the darks just to open up the image a little more. And we'll add just a touch of shadows just to compensate. Lights I'm not really going to mess with because everything looks pretty good, but I'm gonna try to tone down the highlights just a touch it's not really going to pull a ton of detail here, but should do a little bit. We'll click the before and after. It's so minimal, it's barely noticeable. So make those adjustments here. Maybe I'll bump this down just a touch. Okay. And we'll come up to the top here. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of exposure and a little bit of contrast to just help darken up the car. Highlights I'm going to tone down just a little bit. And I'm going to bump up the shadows, tone down the lights just a little bit, and add a little bit of black back in, just kind of adding some contrast. Temperature and white balance I'm not going to mess with. That looks pretty good to me. Let's see what happens if we click on this. That goes back to green, so we're not going to do anything there. I don't need to mess with vibrance or saturation, so we'll come down here to texture, add some of that. Whoa. Look at that, if we add some dehaze, that kind of like brings back the sky. That's interesting. Might have to do that. So I'm gonna add a fair amount of dehaze here just to kind of bring some of the contrast and the darks back in, kind of balance those out. And it'd be cool to add a mask here. Might have to try that. <laughs> add a mask and add some dehaze that brought the sky back. Let's see. Uh, I don't need to make any color adjustments here, so I'm gonna leave that alone. I am going to add a little bit more sharpening. I'll add 15 here and then come down to detail and change 25 to 20. That's just what I've been doing with my workflow. Works good for the images I do. You can add more or less or no sharpening if you'd like. I'm going to hit the enter key to add that. And then I'll hit the P key to see it before. This is our before image. And this is our after. There is not a lot of difference here. It is very minimal. Basically what we're doing is if, if you can see this even, there's a little bit more brightness here and a little more contrast in the black part of the car. That's like so minimal. <laughs> and there's slight contrast up on the top of the, on the roof of the gas station. So not a lot going on there. Okay, what I'm gonna do is close. I'm gonna hit Control D to close my selection. I kind of am interested in trying to bring back some of the detail in the sky since we kind of accidentally figured out how to do that. So I'm gonna take the quick selection tool and just select the highlight areas. Remember, if you make a selection, you don't want to hold the Alt key and Photoshop will select the inverse. So I'm just gonna to try to clean this up a little bit so we've only got the sky selected. Okay, that's pretty much all the highlight areas. So let's go back into Camera Raw Filter and we'll add some dehaze and see if we can bring back some of that shadow detail in this, or not shadow detail. See if we can bring back some of that detail in the sky. So let's scroll down here to dehaze. I don't want to add too much because I don't want it to look like unnatural. So I'm going to go, well, 61 is quite a bit. Let's hit the P key and just see how aggressive that is. That's quite a bit. So I'm going to back off a little. This was kind of an overcast day with just a huge blanket of clouds over the sky. There wasn't really any blue here, so there's not gonna be a lot of detail. But I think 34 looks good here, it just, it's subtle. 
not overkill, just kind of basically adding contrast back into the sky. So I'm going to hit okay here. And actually that looks pretty good. Hit control D to deselect. And it's not anything crazy, but it did bring back some of that detail in the clouds. Mm. I think what I'm gonna do is do control Z to undo and try it one more time and just add a little bit less. So jump back to camera raw filter and we'll do, so we did about 31 last time. I'm gonna do like 20, just to where it's adding a subtle amount of detail. Yeah, that looks better. Not quite so intense. And again, this isn't like anything major, but it just looks more natural because this is so bright and blown out. If you have too much contrast, it just looks not right. And it starts to look HDR, which <laughs> isn't a good look. So. We'll stick with that. That looks good. You can still see some of the detail in the sky. So the color correcting is done at this point. I will just run through and dust this. Again, to dust, I'll zoom in really far, make a really small pointer. This allows you to zoom way in and remove any dust specks or hairs. These nigs are pretty clean. I did a good job of physically dusting them before scanning. But I'm still going to run through and then we'll uh, work on fixing this part too, fixing the bottom of these sprocket holes. And since we're here, we'll just do it real fast. I'm going to hit the L key to select the lasso tool and then just click and drag around the bottom of the sprocket hole and then let go. And this will auto snap to the edge of the film border. If I hit the delete key, it will bring up the, oops, I was using patterns earlier. So make sure content aware is selected in the contents drop down menu and then hit the return key or enter and usually it will do a better job of removing the part that you don't want and i guess right here there's kind of two lines here as well so i might have to reselect that and try again hit the delete key it's not really doing anything different so i'm gonna hit Control d to deselect Control z to undo Control d again to deselect and we'll try this again here. Actually, I have a better idea since this didn't work. I'll just use the stamp tool. If we hit the S key and then hit the Alt key and make a selection over here, we should be able to just come in and remove that blue. Perfect. I don't think that looks too wonky. No, it looks all right. And if you want to remove these lines, you can. I'm not going to worry about it here. Uh, this will work better here. So I'm going to hit the alt key just to the side of where this bottom of the sprocket hole is. We should be able to come through and just make that disappear. I caught a little bit of this blue piece here. So I added kind of a little bit there, but I'm not worried about that. If you want to clean this up, you can find a better selection point like over here. Come back and see if you can blend that. Let's see run through these quickly. I'll speed this part up. Okay, so I'll hit control zero so we can check our work. And that looks pretty good. We've removed all those little sprocket, the bottoms of the sprocket holes. There is one little spot up here that looks kind of goofy. So I'm just going to remove this completely. Sometimes you have to uh, re make a new selection, click and drag, and then come back over and run over it again like this. But there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to save this here. Control S to save. Hit the J key to go back to the heel tool. And I'm going to run through and dust this really quick. This image didn't need a lot of dusting. There wasn't a lot there. It was pretty clean. So I'm going to hit Control zero to zoom back out. While I was zoomed in on the charger. Uh oh, I've lost my mouse. While I was zoomed in on the charger, I noticed there was quite a bit of color noise in the dark areas. So I think what I'm gonna do is jump back into camera raw and go to the denoise panel. Uh, let's see, not denoise, it's, the, it's in the detail panel. There is a noise reduction. So I'm gonna turn this on just a little bit and it'll let us do color noise reduction. This is just the nature of Phoenix. It's oops, pretty grainy. So I'm just gonna do color noise reduction and see if we can pull some of that out. It's not gonna help make the grain any smaller. It just is gonna pull the color out of it. So it should look a little bit cleaner. And zoomed out, you can't really tell. 
zoomed in you can just barely see a difference but I am going to leave it on it just pulls out some of that color in the blacks just makes it look more black so hit ok uh, we'll hit control 0 to zoom out again hit control s to save this when I hit control S, that will send this back to Lightroom. So let's jump back over there and just see the difference between the before and the after. This is the original image file and this is our edit. Not a ton of difference here. I think most of the color cast comes from lab scanners not being able to handle the weird film base that Phoenix has. So a lot of that was removed just from scanning at home. There's not a huge difference in these two. We were able to reduce contrast and make that look pretty, I mean, that's a definitely usable image. It's not my favorite, it's not quite the quality I like, but again, it's Phoenix. It's not bad, it's cool. It gives you the film look if you want the film look without really having to do anything. It just gives you that out of the box. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.